Mr. Harris here and welcome to our last video of Unit 9. I know a lot of you will be pretty sad that it's our last video, but don't worry, we will be continuing with, with Unit 10. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. In this video, we're going to talk about giant metallic structures. But before we begin, I want to see how many of you recall what is a metallic bond. So we learned this in, I believe, Unit 6 or 7. So just to recap on metallic bonds, metallic bonds are the electrostatic attraction between the positive metal ions. So the orange balls over here. In this example, it is the positive copper ions. Another name for positive ions are, what do we call them? Yes, cations. These cations, they're surrounded by, do you remember? A sea of delocalized electrons. The, the, the localized electrons, they love to move around, hence why we call them a C. And for a giant metallic structure, it has a regular 3D arrangement of these metal ions being surrounded by a being surrounded by a C of delocalized electrons. Okay, so it is also having a lattice structure, a 3D regular structure. All right, so let's look at some properties of metals. So metals, they have high densities, quite high. They have high melting points as well. They're solids at room temperature and pressure. However, there, there, is, there is an exception. I'll talk about that later. They're insoluble in water. And finally, they're able to conduct electricity in solid and molten state because they have delocalized electrons. So this is just a summary of what I've mentioned earlier, but I would like to add two more points. Metals, they're also malleable and ductile. So malleable, we've talked about these before as well. They can be hammered into shapes. And for ductile, it means they can be drawn into wires. So one common example of a metal is copper. However, I wanted to mention about the melting point the most. So for metals, in order to melt a metal, a lot of energy and heat is required to overcome the attractive forces, which in this case is the strong metallic bond. Now let me read the explanation again. A lot of energy is needed to overcome the strong metallic bonds in a metal, hence why metals, they have high melting points. Now, if you notice, this explanation is very, very similar to giant ionic structures and giant covalent structures. Because for giant ionic structures, a lot of energy is needed to overcome the strong ionic bond. Hence why they have high melting points. And for giant covalent structures, a lot of energy is needed to overcome the strong covalent bonds. And for this case, for a metal, a lot of energy is needed to overcome the strong metallic bonds. So you will notice all the explanations, they're very, very similar to one another. All right? So one more point to add for this. For metals, apart from mercury, they're all solids at room temperature and pressure because mercury is a liquid at room temperature. For electrical conductivity, metals, they're able to conduct electricity, as I mentioned earlier, due to delocalized electrons. Okay, I want to go into details. You will need to go through them by yourself because a lot of them I've mentioned earlier in the previous structures. So read the textbook and also the PowerPoint.
for malleable and ductile metals they're able to change shape just imagine you apply a force over here now even though the shape changes however as you can see I've drawn a bit already the positive cations over here they're pretty much the same so as I mean even the sea of electrons they're also the same nothing really changes apart from the shape so metals they're able to have the same pretty much the other properties the same however the sh shape is different so that's a very I would say advantage of metals in this case so basically that's all I want to talk about giant metallic structures let's do a quick recap on the whole unit 9 I'll be doing two questions with you I think these two questions give a very good summary of what we have learned this is going to be on page 166, so let's go through it. Study the properties of four substances, W, X, Y, and Z, listed in the table below. Decide the type of structures that is likely to be present in each substance. So before we begin and do the question, let's recall the four structures that we have learned. What's the first structure we learned? We learned about giant ionic structure. Right, I won't write the full form. I think by now you should know what I mean. The second structure we learned was giant covalent structure. The third structure we learned was simple molecular structure. And finally today in this video we learned about giant metallic structure. Okay, so let's do the first substance, substance W. Substance W, it has a high melting point, and oh, this is a huge giveaway over here. No, I don't mean like I'll give, I'll be doing a giveaway in this video, but I mean like it's it's giving a big hint. Okay, let me use a different word, big hint. It's a conductor in electrical. It's able to conduct electricity in both solid and molten states. So we know that it's only one possibility. Only metals are able to do that. So W, it has a giant metallic structure. Now let's have a look at substance Y. Sorry, substance X. Substance X comparatively has a very low melting point to the rest and doesn't conduct electricity in both solid and molten state and it's insoluble in water. So based on this, we know that, okay, we already used giant metallic structures, and so let me cross that out. Based on this, we know that because giant ionic structure for option, I mean, number one, they have high melting point. For number two, they also have high melting point. But number three, they have low melting point because for simple molecular structures, they have weak Van der Waals force, so it's easy to overcome them. Now let's look at Y and Z. For a substance Y, it has a high melting point and it's a non-conductor for both solid or molten state. It's insoluble in water. Now, could it be a giant ionic structure or a giant covalent structure? If we recall carefully, and if we look at Z at the same time, let's look at the molten state for electrical conductivity. In a molten state, why is Z able to conduct electricity? Because it has mobile ions. So based on this, we would know that because Z has mobile ions, it has a giant ionic structure. And that leaves us with Y, which is giant covalent structure and if we look at the rest it makes sense for why it has a high melting point non-conductors so it is giant covalent structure for z it also has a high melting point and it's also soluble in water because of mobile ions again so it has a giant ionic structure all right 
Finally, this is on page 173. It's a good summary as well. I won't be going through the question, but I'll be asking you a question actually. So magnesium oxide is a compound formed by the reaction of magnesium with oxygen. The table below lists the melting points of these three substances. All right, so my question is, what substance has what structure? So what is the structure basically? Very simple question. All right, let's look at magnesium oxide first. Magnesium oxide, so is it a covalent compound or an ionic compound? Yes, it's an ionic compound because magnesium is a metal. Oxygen is a non-metal. And I've mentioned it before. This gives us a hint that this is an ionic compound. So magnesium oxide, because it's an ionic compound, it has a high melting point as well. So it has a giant ionic structure. How about oxygen? Is oxygen an ionic compound? No, it's not a compound. It's not ionic as well. It doesn't have ions. Is it a metal? No, oxygen is not a metal as well. So it's not having a giant metallic structure. So it's down to simple molecular structure or giant covalent structure. Am I right? Because we know that it has, it is, it has covalent bonds. So you can draw it out. So you can draw out the oxygen molecule, so O2. So my question now is, does it have a simple molecular structure or a giant covalent structure. If you look at the melting point, it's low. This gives us the hint that it has a giant, sorry, it has a simple molecular structure. Finally, for a magnesium, we know that it is a metal. It has quite a high melting point. So it is a giant metallic structure. It has a giant metallic structure. 